that was 2020 and this is a quick recap um, on the farm we made 20 bales of silage got my neighbor to cut it and it was lovely weather in May for doing that this is us baling it actually I had a contractor do this job we haven't got a machine that does the baling ourselves so here we go wraps it bales it chucks it out and this is the well, this was the best day of the year this is when we went to my neighbors this is me bailing for my neighbor and I was just paying back the favor uh, bailed 800 small bales of hay for him that day and it was the second of June and it was it was over 30 degrees that day it was the, the best day of the year by far and it started raining the next day and hasn't stopped really I well, did have a few dry days but we couldn't didn't have enough to make hay again until September uh, so we tried in August and July but we, we ended up making silage of that as well strange year for pigs with the virus restrictions stopping our hog roasts for carnivals and weddings uh, but we did do some takeaways from home during the first lockdown in April May and then we did a few hog roasts we did a hog roast every week at the campsite in August so so we, we got through our pigs in the end and we ended up having to buy four wieners because the sow went barren uh, didn't have a litter this year born we've kept back a couple of gilts and hopefully next year they're gonna perform for us and next year I want to grow a bit more forage for the pigs as well uh, so they're eating more grazed material so a strange year for everything but pretty good year for the sheep uh, especially lambing. Lambing was fantastic the weather just could not have been better we didn't hardly have any rain in April and the lambs got off to a great start these were the lambs that were born early because a ram got in with the use in October uh, just for one day and this is what we had from that but they all grew on well so we had 20 hogs that we couldn't sell normally we'd sell them at Mayfair uh, we couldn't do that because it was cancelled this year we've mated 22 ewes early to, to lamb in the middle of March just like these these ones here did last year and the plan with that is to sell those at Mayfair with lambs at foot uh, just so we haven't got to carry so many ewes through the summer I think 100 is going to be about right and we're looking at we've got 120 ewes at the moment um, lambs sold pretty well uh, we're a bit worried about the prices going up or down after we sold them uh, due to the Brexit trade deal uh, but we averaged 80 pounds for them which is pretty much what we normally do I guess the price will probably go up again in January but we'll have to live with that we took our we gambled and at least we haven't got those mouths to feed now so we've gone through a few winters without cover on the polytunnel we decided with lockdown coming that this was a good opportunity we thought we might need to grow some food so we got the cover on and we need it for the sheep as well in the winter so this is what we did in the polytunnel this year tumbling tom tomatoes and uh, they're growing pretty good. Uh, also in the polytunnel we've grown other stuff. So we've got runner beans, which we had a fantastic crop from right through from May till October. They just kept going. They loved it in the polytunnel. I uh, put down compost, uh, probably about six or eight inches of it, and the pumpkins grew pretty good in there as well. Although the pumpkins outside grew just as well, I think, as these. So yeah, put loads of uh, compost down on both sides and we planted it out uh, tomatoes beans sweet corn this is actually the third or fourth attempt at growing sweet corn this was really late and um, the sweet corn didn't come till mid to late September um, uh, sheep got in the polytunnel and they, they took out the took out the seeds as they were just coming up and they didn't do a very good job to the, the beans either but the beans recovered pretty quick uh, these here are the chilies and little cucumber melons that we grew and then we had aubergines and cape gooseberries which are a pretty good crop of those as well though they came a bit later the cape gooseberries aubergines so really good these are the aubergines and I'm trying to try and overwinter these as well they came pretty late this year too and I'm hoping that next year they'll come earlier and the tomatoes as well. The tomatoes did absolutely fantastically. These ones here are just side shoots that I cut off and stuffed in the ground and we didn't water them, we didn't stake them uh, and we ended up taking a massive crop of tomatoes off of those. Uh, but 
they didn't really ripen, they were all green, but we make chutneys and stuff out of them. This is the main uh, crop of tomatoes, they've done so well. Uh, put those going in uh, February and March, and they just went away in the polytunnel crazy. Uh, didn't put enough string up to hold them up, and they, they collapsed, so we still just had tomatoes. Just more tomatoes than we could cope with. We've grown tomatoes before in grow bags, but putting the compost down and growing them straight in the compost is just a game changer. Uh, and plans for next year in the polytunnel. Uh, going to try some, some watermelons, hopefully, and also some gherkins. And then I'm, at the moment we've got the chickens in the polytunnel, but I want to put some salad crops in there next winter if we can. And it's going to be a, a big plan. So we've had a bit of a, a bit of a rough year with the chickens. Uh, haven't hatched very many chicks out. We've had incubator problems, uh, and then in March, late March, we had a, a, a dog got in with the chickens and, and killed five, or six of them, which wasn't ideal. A bit upsetting. Um, so anyway, we bought twelve layers to make up for that, so, and they've been really good. They've laid well. At the moment, all the chickens are in the shed because of avian flu. Yeah, so another bloody virus. So I've put the layers in the polytunnel. They've got uh, a light coming on uh, at 5 o'clock in the morning at the moment. And they've really upped their game. They're laying 11 or 12 eggs between them every day. Uh, the rest of the chickens are in the shed, the normal chicken shed. But just thought we'd put them in the polytunnel, see how they get on. And they seem to be doing quite well. Next year with the chickens, we're looking at again 50 layers and building a chicken wagon to follow the sheep around. So that will be for the boys and I to, to do next week. They've got uh, school starting late because of another uh, lockdown restriction. And so we're going to build a chicken wagon and they'll follow the sheep around the pasture. Hopefully, avian few restrictions will be lifted. And uh, boys are really keen to do that and look after that job and sell the eggs themselves. So I'm looking forward to doing that with them. So the bees have been uh, having a bit more time this year because of lockdown and not being able to do other stuff. And uh, we've really grown them. So we started with two hives and we're sort of up to about six now and a couple of nukes as well. And uh, not sure if they'll all make it through the winter. Uh, did have a heavy infestation in a couple of them with Varroa which I've treated now hopefully that will be sorted out but this was actually a swarm that we caught and I'm actually standing up on the uh, platform about 20 feet in the air at the moment a swarm we caught in June and this has only been in there a couple of days and they were really good and they're still going strong put them in the uh, control warm uh, next year with the bees I suppose we'll just see how it goes and try and expand a bit more and try and make a bit more honey this year we growing the bees out and going to try and make a bit more honey next year is the plan with the bees. So that's all our livestock and uh, going to have a quick look around the apple trees now. This is the uh, crab apple tree. We've got one of these just for flowers really but there's a few little crab apples on and we actually made a little bit of cider and some crab apple jelly from those. Um, we've had a few cooking apples off this tree. That was a nice one. Um, we, this is the first year where we've had more eating apples and more cooking apples than we could cope with from these 10 trees, I think they've been there about seven or eight years. Um, the rest we just made into cider. We've made eight gallons of cider. Uh, this one's the, the main cider apple tree. And uh, he's been pulling branches down, had to prop them up. It's a fantastic crop. A uh, couple of trees out of the six or eight eaten apple trees, we've got only two really produced a good crop. Uh, but luckily one of those is our leaves, which is these. So these were already in August. They're going over a little bit now. This is September when I film this. And the other ones were ready in sort of October, November, and uh, we're still eating those now. Uh, it's just the other tree. Our other fruit crops, um, not brilliant. Grapes, kiwis, raspberries, really good this year. I haven't got any video of that though. Next year, we're, we're going to plant some grapes in the polytunnel as well, I think. See how that goes. But uh, really pleased with the eating apples this year. So a little talk about the farm diversification projects now. Um, this is a foot golf promotional video that we made at the end of August. Um, the virus restrictions eased off at the end of July and all through August and September. 
and so actually the campsite and the foot golf um, went quite well we were limiting everyone so on the campsite so there was only we only had four pitches at a time there was four toilets so we had one pitch per toilet and we built an extra toilet which is another project we did as well in the spring during the lockdown when the boys were off school um, worked okay I could have probably had 50 pitches a night the, the demand was there but we just didn't want the people in at that point the foot golf did okay pretty similar to normal years but a lot less locals a lot less locals paintball didn't get going at all until the end of July we did a little bit through July and August and September then it picked up again in December um, we actually had a brilliant January uh, before the restrictions came in uh, I haven't got any video of the paintball but that went that was uh, well that's a massive hit this year we've, we've uh, really really been uh, lost out on that to what we normally do uh, but we did have government support so it sort of averaged itself out and it's given us a lot of extra time to do other little projects so we can't complain too much so we could do eight weeks in 2020 for the campsite and for golf, but we didn't find out until late July. So we, we opened a few days early and we stayed open a week later, but nobody really was interested in coming once we got past the bank holiday weekend into September. So next year we're allowed eight weeks again if the restrictions remain the same and hopefully everything will be a bit more back to normal. Um, we'll open uh, middle to beginning of July and run till the bank holiday weekend. And as usual, we will hope for a little bit better weather. Uh, we seem to get about 20 days of rain in August, which doesn't help. Um, another thing that didn't help this year was we had a couple of storms as well. It was really windy and it blew a few tents away, the first one. And then a few days later, we had another one, which again did some damage. We, we even had the sink unit blow over. We had our gazebo got ripped and that's uh, pretty standard stuff for August. But we keep thinking one year we're going to have a lovely beautiful sunny August and we did have a few nice days as you can see from this video this was done at, at the end of August and the last week of August seemed to be pretty good there's a little slow-mo here of my best shot Whoop. <laughs> that was a beauty uh, if we planned it we'd never have been able to do it but yeah we did have a really good time up there and the weather was good for the last week at, at least and it all seemed seemed like it was worth it in the end and uh, we will do it again next year. Just had to get this photo of the sunflowers in again. I didn't actually get any video while they're in full flower, but they were fantastic. Um, this little bit of video I got after they finished and they all seeded really well. We actually planted them by hand, or the whole family out there, and they came up really well, even though it was really dry after we planted them. Um, it suppressed the weed, they got ahead of it, and it was a really good crop. Uh, this is a phacelia that I put in late in August and actually that has started to flower in November uh, not much good for the bees but the plan is for that to come up in the spring and I put some chicory in there as well and that's in the pig pens and I'm hoping that next year we'll get some more forage for the pig so I'm planning on doing a few trials maybe some peas maybe some more chicory which I did this year and more for celia and sunflowers um, let those flower for the bees and then turn the pigs on them and uh, sort of plant them in rotation. Uh, really pleased with Phacelia. It's the first time I've grown Phacelia. There's stubble turnips down in there as well. So it, they've come up really well in the mix. So when you mix the stubble turnips and the Phacelia, they seem to seem to all come up better than if you just put the stubble turnips in on their own. The beetles and everything get in there and the cabbage white butterflies have a go at them. So next year the plan is to do a few more mixed crops and have the pigs run in them and hopefully they'll flower for the bees as well so it's a multi-use situation and keeps the pigs happy and the weeds down so this year I have been strip grazing the pigs as usual and that works really well and the only thing with that is it takes a long time for the recovery behind so I need to think about whether we can get them in a paddock rotation system next year so that I turn them in on a big patch uh, for 10 days and then move them on to the next patch so we got into YouTube as well this year uh, not in a big way we put a few videos on mostly just for ourselves and this one's really just for us to watch back over and 
in a few years time but we've we've up to 94 subscribers without trying to push it we actually got about 20 since christmas um and we only really got one video that's anybody's watching and that's the, the lamb and one um but it's a bit of fun and if it helps get us out there and document what we're doing at least it's something for us to watch when we get older and can't get out and do it and we can look back and see what we used to do oh, at least i'm going to find it interesting if no one else does I know we could push it a bit more, but at the moment I'm not really interested in doing that. I've watched a few videos as well and I've learned a lot from watching other people. So maybe if someone watches and learns a bit from what we're doing, then that'll be fine as well. Um, got to talk about the weather. Um, farmers always want to talk about the weather. What can we say? Uh, it was the wettest year of 2020 since 2000 and I have been recording rainfall on the farm here um, since before that about 97 98 i recorded it um, however we did have the sunniest uh, not overall driest april and may i don't think uh, but definitely the sunniest and i think the driest number of days it was really dry look how dry it is here um, pigs enjoying a, a bit of water in the in the bath there um, fantastic weather uh, rain started raining in June and we actually had the wettest June we've ever had uh, since I've been recording which is more than 20 years um, and then July was wet August was wet we had a couple of nice dry weeks in September but other than that not a lot to talk about with the rain uh, just was the story of the year this is a, a bit of a fun a fun video one morning I came to feed the pigs as I normally do uh, I think this must have been in April and I couldn't find the pigs and they are really well trained to the electric fence and the electric fence was still up but they'd managed to, to push a gate over and there's only really one gate and they pushed it over a tiny bit and they managed to get out into the barley uh, it was a bit of a, a bit of a moment when I couldn't find them but they, they weren't that far away couple of fields away I managed to find them give them a shout and they all came running so anyway nothing runs as smoothly as it should or how it looks on uh, on YouTube always but this turned out okay in the end and the pigs had a bit of exercise we got them back no problem at all come on then so these have been well trained so they follow the bucket and uh, this is one of those times where it's a good thing So this is a last little bit of video on the 2020 recap. Some starlings flying over the field, and uh, my boys have been telling me that I've got to say the say the magic words as soon as it's on YouTube, and that is please like and subscribe. But if you have watched all the way to here, and you are still watching, then uh, I'm sure you have. And thanks very much. See you in 2021. See you directly. Bye.